All right, hello and welcome to RC Hacker. Now today I'm going to tear down these uh, Fat Shark base goggles. They are they are the RCV922 base VGAs, which I bought well probably a year ago now. Um, what I've done here uh, while I was using them, because I've got high humidity here, I've um, moved the foam out of the way so I could get a bit of extra ventilation while I was flying. So that's why they're a bit of a mess at the moment, but they still work alright. And those foam inserts, you can buy them separately and they're quite cheap. There's two screws here on the bottom. And I'm no... I had a little look at some other videos pictures that I found online and we do have to you can see that it's split there so I'll just take the foam away at that point now they should come apart which oops they do surprisingly easy okay you can see one of the clips there sure what's going on in the middle section there. I've got a little propeller here. This is a spudger. Okay, there's something else holding it together there. Come on little baby. Got him. That was the tricky bit. And okay. I'm gonna remove that little joystick. Top of that joystick there. And we're in. I've got our main L C D control board there. That's interesting, the whole whole board there moves across on that diopter. And just that one there. Now I have seen a video where these these plugs um, they lose a, uh, lose vision in one eye of these goggles, and and the guy just opens it up, pulls one of these plugs out, and squeezes it a little bit. So um, if your fat sharks ever stop working, might be worth checking that one. Oh, let's see if we're in frame here. Okay, that one's off. Okay, that's the main board removed, the main controller board, so put him aside. Alright, there's really not much holding those ones in. That, that one was just barely one turn and it was out. Oh, that is, uh, is that actually soft or is that a hard nylon? No, that's a, quite a stiff nylon washer there. Whoops! Oh no, it's gone. Okay, no worries, I found it. Very hard to see on a concrete floor that's covered in crap. So, moving on. That's one um, LCD module basically lifts right out. Now, they say you don't really want to go inside, open these up and go inside them because we get dust in them. You know, so I'm not going to pull them apart any more than this. This is enough for me. So it looks like I've got a bit of damage there. That screw mount there, it looks like it's a bit 
a little bit broken. Okay, so now I can pull out the control board. And our sockets, and what else we got? The last thing. In the bottom there is the, the headphone jack. There we go. Yeah, she's all apart. So let's have a closer look at these boards and see what they're all about. So I've got the main uh, LCD control board here. As you can see, let's get a pointer. You can see on the back here, here are the um, big, uh, what do you call them? Flat connectors, sockets, yeah, one for each LCD. And um, here's our inputs here. These would be our video inputs. Video and uh, maybe not audio. And power and stuff like that. Um, we've got a, a chip there. I'll get a photo of that so I can have a closer look at the data sheet. Okay, this chip, the Texas Instruments TVP5150. This is the one that makes the fat sharks good at what they do. Now, basically, what this does, I'll just hide the gun. There's a lot of, lot of stuff in here. I've, I've already gone through through these to figure out what's relevant or not. So here's, here's the introduction. It's an ultra low power NTSC PAL second video decoder. Okay, it's so available in such and such a package. Now here's the main thing. The TVP5150A decoder utilizes Texas Instruments patented technology for locking to weak, noisy, or unstable signals. Now this is why the Fat Sharks are so good at displaying these weak video signals and I know there are other glasses out there and certainly little TV screens that if they don't get a good signal they just go blue, blue screen which is not what you want when you're FPVing. Um, Genlock real-time control output is generated for synchronizing downstream video encoders. This is interesting and I'm, I'm gonna go off on a tangent here. Um, my diversity project I had a whole lot of trouble I was switching video signals and then putting that into an on-screen display. So I was having the actual diversity controller put um, on-screen display on board. I'll, I'll put a link to a video, the video of that up here. Now basically it didn't work because I was switching and all the sync timing was, was out and the microchip, sorry, the Maxim chip that was decoding the video wasn't as good as this Texas Instruments chip in locking onto a weak signal. When it's got a nice clean signal that comes straight out of the camera on the plane and then you put your OSD information on it, no worries. But if it's a noisy signal, it can't lock onto it. So it it really didn't work. Maybe I could use this chip in, in that sort of setting somehow, have this chip ahead of that and then it would feed on that timing information to the Maxim chip in order to put the OSD information on it, but it's getting really complex. It's possible, it's possible to do it, but it's really driving the cost up of what I wanted to do with that. Anyway, moving on, what else we got? Um, it Yeah, it just it's got an active video indicator. That, that tells you if it's actually got a um, video signal or not. That's my understanding of it anyway. Um, also, there was one more thing. This actually accepts two video inputs, and um, the way it's set up in the Fact Shark, it's only using one of the video inputs, and you could apparently switch those in software. So it's got the potential to be its own diversity controller by itself and have two different video signals come in. Another option, like it could be a, you, you, there's potential there to actually do a software mod to the Fact Sharks if you could do that and um, make it into a very simple diversity controller interesting that that capability is there so anyway that's the main chip that makes the fat sharks as good as what they do it decodes the video signal that comes from your receiver or whatever and no matter how weak it is it'll display what it can and when it goes to pot 
it does that nice blue screen. So, yeah, all right, moving on. That looks like the one that's doing all the business there, converting our signal into a digital signal for the LCDs. Now, this chip is the main display driver for the um, color displays on this. Um, very detailed data sheet. I'm not really going to go into it too much, but um, from this data sheet, I managed to figure out which actual um, because the data sheet seemed, it, it specifies what what the actual display it's driving, and did a bit more searching and found this, which, as far as I can tell, is the actual display in the um, in the fat sharks so you can see here at 640 by 480 um, that by 3 is just for each of the different colors it actually goes up to 644 by 484 don't know if you'd notice that difference or not um, yeah and apparently these are quite advanced little displays and I wasn't able to find price on these on these but I'd say most of the cost in this um, in the goggles is in these displays like I said, I'll provide links. Um, there's a lot of information if you really want to get down and dirty or you're interested in trying to make your own goggles. So, um, yeah, I'll provide links to these. Oh, we've got a Maxim chip there. Oh, got the shakes here. Okay, so here we've got another amplifier. It's a Maxim amplifier and by the speed of it, the 200 megahertz, 150 megahertz, I'd say this is a um, this amplifies the video signal when it just gets put to a video out, so it's a video driver signal. I'm not sure if it's amplifying the video signal before it goes into the Texas chip or not, but um, yep, that's that one. And that one looks like a Motorola there. So this is, well, it's the only microcontroller on the whole board, and it's quite a small one. I think it's only got eight pins, but I think I'm not exactly sure what it's doing. It's, um, you know, it's got a few general purpose IOs and stuff. Maybe it's just taking information from the switches or something like that. I'm not ex exactly sure of the purpose on this. Um, maybe it's maybe it's been programmed with the um, I2C or SPI protocols to talk to the the um, main video processing chips on the, on the fat sharks and sort of coordinate them but there you go it's got a PIC microchip these are quite popular with um, you know the basic programs and all that sort of that PICAX if you've ever heard of it and want to get into it so yeah that's that's that little chip um, yeah, really not sure what it does, but anyway, moving on. All right, moving on. The other board. Now, I'm not sure about this. What? Obviously, there's there's a couple of regulators there, so I'm guessing that one is so say for power regulation. Come on, focus. Yep. This is the main five volt regulator on the um on that power board there. Now you note here I've highlighted a few things. It's got reverse polarity protection which is good so it means if you plug in your battery the wrong way the fat sharks shouldn't blow up but I'm not going to test them. Now down here I've highlighted this. This is the thermal resistant junction to ambient and it's got a figure here of 62.5. Now this is a linear regulator so what that means is the, the voltage going in, which might be of a two cell, you might be looking at what is it, 7.2 volts or something like that. So you've got your 7.2 volts going in, and the difference between the 5 volts that it's outputting is about 2.2 volts. Um, multiply that by the amount of current that the fat sharks use. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head, but let's just say it is 300 milliamps so we take out 0.3 multiply by 
two volts, which gives you 0.66 watts. Okay, and then if you take this figure, this is degrees centigrade per watt, and we multiply that 62.5. And that gives us 41.5. So that's the increase in temperature. It's it's a ballpark figure, but that's quite a substantial increase in temperature to dissipate that heat. And if you're running three cells, it's going to warm up even more. Now I have noticed using the fat sharks, they do heat up a bit. So it's worth noting that there is a linear regulator in there. Um, moving on, moving on, moving on. The dropout voltage. This is basically um, how much above 5 volts this thing will continue to output 5 volts. So you're looking at between 250 to 450 millivolts, so like half a volt. So this will run off 5.5 volts, 6 volts. And if you do run it off that voltage, it'll produce less heat and less wasted energy. Yeah, that's it for the linear regulator. Let's move on to... and. There's another one over there. Close look at that. Okay, so this is the 3.3 volt regulator. Um, it's another linear regulator, so it's going to output a little bit more heat as well. Um, 0.45 volts dropout voltage, and I'd say, well, I'm not, I'm not 100 percent sure, but I'd say this is powered off the 3.3 volt rail. Um, yep, moving on. Got our four position switch, which I don't know what that does. Um, there's an AV input jack there, the little uh, AV switcher. I think that switches from the AV here into... I don't know, I just, I just use these as really the basic sort of function. And there's a little joystick there, it's one, two, three, four, five, little clicky joystick and um, looks like a little bit of a resistor network at the base of that. I presume that would just get passed on to a microprocessor somewhere. And right in the middle there is, what is that, LM4880. What, it might be an audio amp or something like that. So we've got the LM4880 Boomer little audio power amplifier so this is our probably our amplifier for our headphones um, just a simple chip example circuit there may not be the exact way that it's put in um, yeah um, it's only got parts on the one side and um, there you go QCV922 version 5 right and that's about all there is to it it's just the two boards there, and of course our um, LCD screens as well. But I'm not going to take those apart. I really, I really uh, don't want to get dust in there. You know, there's enough. I'm going to really do a workshop here. Certainly not a clean room, and I like to keep these clean as possible. If I can avoid taking these apart, I will. So, cheers. Thanks for watching. Now. One of the reasons why I'm doing this, because this is an expensive bit of kit, is the diopter adjustments here, my eyes are quite close together. I don't know what that means, but yep, my eyes are quite close together and I have them in at the minimum there. So I want to see if I can modify them just so I can get a little bit closer. Any difference, it's got to dissipate that as heat. Tasha!